Uh, let us come to the hardware part. Let, let us discuss how to do the experiment. As I have uh, in the last uh, uh, experiment, I have told you, uh, I have made you familiar, familiar with uh, different types of uh, microwave. Uh, this entire setup is called the microwave test bench, and this is called the cluster power supply, and this is called the request cluster. This is the microwave source. To generate the microwave source, we uh, need certain beam voltage, dipolar voltage. Um, that is supplied to this uh, replaced cluster and uh, since uh, heat is produced from the replaced cluster you have to cool, cool it down so we have a cooling fan pointed towards the replaced cluster and this is called the isolator and it directs the wave in this direction and protects the cluster power supply uh, the, the cluster from any unwanted reflection from the load end if there is a mismatch a reflected wave, wave will come towards the uh, source and it will affect the original frequency of the replaced cluster. This isolator protects the source. This is called the frequency meter. I told you in the past experiment that I, I will discuss in the second experiment what is the principle of frequency meter. Fre uh, frequency, uh, frequency meter is actually a resonant cavity. Uh, you have a parallel plate like this. In this, uh, you have a two parallel plates like this. When you rotate the frequency meter, the, there is a variation in the distance between the two plates. And you know that C equal to epsilon A by D. Capacitance, it depends upon the distance between two plates. If D changes, your capacitance changes, your C changes. And C uh, and your frequency, uh, the regional frequency of this uh, uh, regional cavity or this frequency meter, F equal to 1 by 2 pi root over of LC. If C changes, then your frequency changes. That means your frequency depends upon the capacitance and capacitance depends upon the distance between the parallel plates. When you start rotating the uh, frequency meter, the D changes. That means the capacitance changes. At one point of time, the frequency becomes the uh, the, uh, the, uh, the frequency of this uh, frequency meter. The original frequency of this frequency meter matches with the frequency of this replaced cluster. Suppose it is uh, generating 9.8 gigahertz. Suppose this replaced cluster is generating 9.8 gigahertz frequency, and at that uh, during the rotation. Your frequency, the, the, the resonant frequency of this frequency meter also 9.8 gigahertz. That means the resonance occurs. When the resonance occurs, the impedance is minimum. So always the wave wants to travel in the uh, low impedance path. Always the wave wants to travel in the low impedance path. So uh, initially I told you that you have to generate a square wave, right? In the every experiment you have to generate this square wave. So this wave is propagated and it is detected by this tunable probe and you are uh, seeing the square wave. When the uh, resonance occurs, when the resonance occurs, instead of the wave, when the resonance occurs, instead of the wave going to in this direction, it goes up. Because this is a low resistive path at the point, uh, at the point of resonance, the, uh, the resistance is minimum. So the wave instead of going in this direction, it goes up. When it goes up, here the wave is absent. So a dip occurs. A, a dip occurs. A dip occurs. That means the wave will uh, turn off and on. And, the, and at that point, the wave is absent here. The wave will be turned off. And again, when you rotate the frequency meter, it will go. Uh, it comes back. I'll show you. Uh, Sir will. I will just take the recording. Sir will uh, show you how to measure the frequency. So you can see now the frequency, the wave is in full, uh, uh, full. Uh, it has full amplitude. Now SAR is rotating. SAR is trying to rotate the frequency meter. After the rotation, you observe at certain point of time the the amplitude of the wave. You can see. You can see here how the amplitude is decreasing again, coming back. That this uh, this uh, uh, thing is called the dip. Dip occurs. You can see again. There is a flick. You can see the flick that the, the amplitude is decreasing again, coming back. At that point of time, uh, at that point of time, you, really, you uh, leave the frequency meter. You have to re remove your hand from the frequency meter and try to see the reading. <coughs> you can see the reading here. How to measure the frequency of the frequency meter? You can see there are two uh, copper wires. There are two copper wires. You have to see the lower copper wire. You have to see the see the 
lower copper wire and you can measure the what is the frequency you can see it is around 9.82 there are division 9.8 9.82 9.8 4 like that the red color line the red color line the red color line intersect the second uh, copper meter uh, second copper wire at 9.82 around you can take also the exact uh, reading by calculating uh, the exact uh, scaling so it is around 9.82 so now your th practical value of the frequency is 9.82 now you will calculate uh, the theoretical frequency by the formula i have told you 1 by lambda 0 equal to uh 1 by lambda g square plus 1 by lambda c square okay uh now we, uh, lambda c is known lambda c equal to 2 into a uh, 2 into 2.8 2.286 i have just uh, told you you can see the blackboard uh lambda c equal to 2 into a 2.286 and if i calculate the lambda g only then lambda 0 can be calculated now i have told you that we have to take the reading between two successive maximums and otherwise you can take the uh, uh, distance between two successive minimums so this is the uh, slotted section there are certain scales here like your slide caliper uh, you have first to you have to see the zero position uh, you have to first find the maxima here uh, you have to first locate the first maxima so you can you can see the wave is increasing and decreasing like that so first you have to locate uh, lo the slotted section at a fast maxima so fast we will fast see the uh, maxima here and corresponding uh, d1 will note down so you can see the corresponding d1 the uh, cro is uh, the screen is at the wave is at maximum position the amplitude is maximum the corresponding value uh, d1 i told you that lambda g equal to 2 into d1 minus g2 so fast d1 is the uh, d1 is the location of the fast maxima so now we can see where the zero is coinciding if you can observe uh, the zero is at uh, uh, around uh, 8.8 uh, it is at 8.8 uh, then you have to match uh, out of zero uh, you can take 8.8 if you, for more accuracy you have to check which division of 0 to 10 is matching with the values here from 9 to 10 or which value from uh, 0 to 10 is matching for more accuracy so that you can calculate it is 9.8 exactly 9.8 or 9.80 or 81 or 82 for more accuracy so here which are which are are missing matching you can see it is 8.8 plus something suppose 5 uh, suppose 5 mm -hmm. is matching so the, this five line is matching here so this five line is matching so it is uh, 9.85 sorry 8.85 so d1 is 8.85 then we will uh, move the c uh, move the uh, slotted section for searching for another maxima so i am uh, focusing on this cro and searching for the second maxima now this is decreasing decreasing then again you will get another maxima at that point of time we will stop ha uh, i'll stop here and note down the second reading this is uh, 11 around 10.9 10.9 okay 10.9 and which one is matching and uh, the matching if i see four fourth line is missing oh, so 10.94 can see so d1 is 10.94 d2 is uh, 8.85 so lambda g equal to 2 into d1 minus d2 so 2 into d1 is 10.94 Minus eight point eight five. This is in centimeter. So you can calculate. 
2 into this one. Uh, sir, from the calculator, you can tell me 10.94 minus 8.85. 10.94 minus 8.85 into 2 equal to 4.18 so lambda g equal to 4.18 centimeter and lambda c uh, you know that 2 into sorry 2 into a 2. 286 this is the a this is the a we have uh, calculated in the scale using the scale we have calculated it is 2.286 centimeter so you can calculate lambda c 2.286 into 2 4.572 lambda c then we can put the formula 1 by lambda 0 equal to 1 by lambda g square plus 1 by lambda c square. From that you can calculate lambda c is known, lambda g is known. So you can convert it to into centimeter. You can calculate lambda 0 in terms of centimeter. Then convert it to into meter and c equal to f lambda. So, f equal to c by lambda, c equal velocity of light, 3 into 10 to 8 meter per second and lambda 0 you have calculated, from that you can calculate f0. This is the f0 you have got theoretically. Now, uh, this, uh, this is the practically we have, you have calculated. Practically you have calculated 9.82, theoretically you can calculate so, percentage of error equal to theoretical minus practical F0 theoretical minus F0 practical by theoretical. So, you could get some error in that case. Suppose it is coming theoretically 9 point something, 9.9 uh, and practically you are getting 9.82 by 9.82 9.9 you can calculate the percentage of error okay <laughs> so this is the this is all about your experiment 6 thank you all